Happy Easter. Today is Monday of the octave of Easter, and we continue to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. Today, I'd like to reflect with you on the first reading from Mass, which was taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Normally, I reflect on the Gospels. Today's Gospel was uh, taken from the 28th chapter of St. Matthew, where uh, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were running back from the tomb, and they encountered the risen Lord. They fell at his feet and worshipped him. Uh, and then they were instructed to go and tell the apostles uh, to, to meet the Lord in Galilee. Meanwhile, uh, the, the Pharisees uh, and the chief priests instructed uh, the soldiers to lie about what had happened about the body, to say that the disciples of Jesus had taken the body away rather than that the Lord had risen. And so they wanted to undermine the witness of the women, the witness to the faith in the risen Lord. Today's first reading was taken from the second chapter of the book's book of the Acts of the Apostles. And I'm actually going to read a longer passage to you. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who are sojourning here in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen. Please to what I have to say. These people are not drunk, as you would suppose. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, it is rather what was meant by Joel, the prophet, when he said... It shall happen in the last days. God declares that I will pour out some of the Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Yes, even upon my servants and my handmaids will I pour out some of my Spirit in those days, and they shall speak like prophets. I will display wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before that great and resplendent day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man accredited to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God wrought through him in your midst, as you yourselves are well aware. Though this man was delivered up according to the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you used lawless people to crucify and kill him. But God raised him up, releasing him from death's throes, since it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says about him, I have set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I will not be perturbed. So my heart has been gladdened and my tongue has rejoiced. My flesh too shall live on in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you allow your Holy One to see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can speak frankly to you about the patriarch David. He died and was buried, and his tomb is here in our midst to this very day. But because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying that he was neither abandoned to the netherworld, nor has his flesh seen decay. This Jesus God has raised up. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted to God's right hand, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and poured it forth. This is what you now see and hear. For it was not David who went up into the heavens, yet it is he who says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a stool for your feet. Let all the house of Israel know for sure then that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I read the longer passage from Acts because it includes the prophecy of Joel. The prophecy of Joel talked about an outpouring of the Spirit. Peter and the other apostles had just experienced the Pentecost event. They had been at prayer with Mary when the Holy Spirit descended like flames of fire upon each one of them, and then they went out and boldly proclaimed the risen Lord to those who would believe in him. And everyone understood each in their own language. People thought that they were drunk when they went out, but it was only nine in the morning. Joel had, foreseen, had foretold that the Spirit of the Lord would be poured out upon all flesh, Joel was prophesying to the kingdom of Judah, which was experiencing at that time a plague, in that case, a plague of locusts. We are experiencing a plague of sorts with the coronavirus. But the Lord was to deliver his people through a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. 
The apostles, you recall, on the evening of the resurrection were fearful. They were locked behind closed doors. And Jesus appeared to them and said, peace be with you. And he showed them the wounds in his hand and his side. And he wished them peace again. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. So the Lord sent out his apostles. And the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them in a new way at Pentecost. And so Peter spoke boldly. He gave a proclamation, the essentials of our faith, a kerygma, we might say. What did he proclaim? First of all, that God the Father sent Jesus, his son, who was born as a man. He was a man who was commended to the Jews and sent to them in particular as their Messiah. This man, is also a true God, performed many mighty works and deeds and signs. He made the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. He raised the dead to new life. Jesus himself had said in St. John's Gospel, if you don't believe me, at least believe my works. He gave proofs as to who he was. But this same Jesus, they crucified in the flesh. They accused him. They rejected him. They crucified him in the flesh. He suffered and died in the flesh and was buried. But God the Father raised him in the flesh. He rewarded him for his fidelity. That is the essence of the Christian faith, which Peter then proclaimed to the Jews. So there's a pneumatological dimension of this passage, the outpouring of the Spirit. And the Spirit compels Peter to give this message of salvation to the Jewish people first. He, Peter has been sent to them to bring them to, to faith in Jesus because faith in Jesus leads to salvation. Peter goes on to give a further proof saying this was spoken about already in the Psalms and he quotes Psalm 16. It's interesting, he quotes the Greek rather than the Hebrew version of Psalm 16. But it, the Psalms were said to have been written by King David. But Peter points out David wrote this Psalm not in light of himself, but in light of his descendant who would be an eternal king. For he says, we know David died and we know where David's tomb is. But Jesus was born of the house of David. And the Psalm says that the Holy One of God would not suffer, would not go down to the netherworld. He, his flesh would not suffer corruption. Indeed, Jesus is revealed as the Holy One of God, a true descendant of David, but the true son of the Father. He, he did not remain in death, but he rose from the dead. And his flesh was not corrupted which in the Jewish mind would have meant a definitive end. Rather, he was raised up and glorified in the flesh. Yes, Jesus is alive and he offers life and hope to all those who would believe in him. At the end of his homily sermon, Peter says that God made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. That is the essential proclamation that Jesus is Lord that Jesus is the Messiah, that he came down from heaven, lived in the flesh, suffered in the flesh, and was raised in the flesh, and went back up to heaven so that we might go up with him to heaven. Peter says, we are witnesses of these things. Just like the women were witnesses, and Peter and the apostles were witnesses, we too are called to be witnesses to the joy of the resurrection. How has the resurrection impacted your life? Do you live differently because you have met the risen Lord? Just like Christmas, there's a whole Christmas season and many people only celebrate Christmas for one day. We have a whole octave of Easter followed by all these days of Easter. There are a total of 50 days in the Easter season in which we have the opportunity to witness to the risen Lord who makes all things new. We witness to the fact that there is a love stronger than death. Once more, happy Easter, everyone.